Our PlayStation Live cast continues, and I'm here with the boys from Blizzard to talk more about Diablo 3 on PS3. We just saw a massive stage demo. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I have been a fan of this series for nearly 15 years at this point. In college, I majored in Diablo 2 and uh, don't have a lot to show for it, unfortunately, aside, for a, aside from a burning passion for this series. I love Diablo 3 on the PC, but now you guys are showing off what may be, dare I say, the definitive version of Diablo 3 on PS3. We're talking same screen co-op, four players, and it works great. And I want to talk for a second about this controller support. It is, this is not tacked on. This is not just sort of thrown together. It feels right. Talk to me about the process of getting that in place to getting it feel right on DualShock. Well, we realized that from day one, the, the biggest challenge we had is how do we make it feel rock solid on, the, on that controller, right? And it's not just a matter of you know, mapping the powers to the buttons or introducing direct control or even the evade move, but it's really all the stuff that's happening underneath the hood to support what you're seeing on screen. So we really you know, went in and tweaked all the powers in the game, you know, sometimes speeding them up, sometimes changing them drastically, because it's super important. And once you have direct control, you want to have that immediate responsive feel. You know, every time you press the X button, something cool has to happen on screen. The animations need to start happening right away. So I think it was really important from day one that, that, it, it, that we, we not just ask ourselves, how can we make it feel great on the controller, but how can we sort of bring a whole new level to the Diablo experience? I love that you mentioned the, uh, the right analog stick evade move. Obviously kind of popularized by the God of War series, a series PlayStation fans know and love. But I'll tell you, it, it really makes a more tactile feel to the game. You feel nimbler. Talk to me a little bit about just, you know, what we see in this new inventory system even. I mean, and, and this sort of item queue. I mean, you guys really went in deep on making this work perfectly on PS3. Talk about just some of these other details as well. Yeah, well, so we wanted to make sure that the game flows really well when you have everyone sitting together on the couch. So we've done everything from obviously evade, and then uh, the inventory, we um, added a fast equip, which allows you to, when you're playing together, just on the fly, pick stuff up, get a quick shorthand look at it, and either equip it if it's good, or maybe if, yeah, I'm playing a barbarian, he's playing a wizard. If I pick up a wand, I can just drop it on the ground without opening the inventory. Um, and on top of that, we even uh, streamline the items so that when you're at higher levels, we drop fewer items that we don't think you're gonna need, and we target all of the items for you. So the chances of a barbarian finding an item that's strength, which the barbarian really needs, are very, very high. Ah, that's cool. Sort of a just a refinement and a, and a sort of simplification here for, but but not losing any of that depth. That's the other thing. No, I would right. say it's not so much a simplification, but a streamlining. Yes. You really want to make sure we we keep true yep. to the essential core of Diablo 3. And I played this thing. We had I, we were down at your offices a little while ago. We had a four-player match going, just as a testament to how addictive this game is. We were sitting there doing same screen co-op, and I mean, it was like people were like, "Okay, we got, we got to, we have other matters to attend to here." We were like, "Just another minute, just another minute." It's a lot of fun. It's a great game, and you guys are also, of course, supporting full online play in addition to just the couch co-op. And talk a little bit about that. We can be able to mix and match. Totally, and I think that's a really important point to make. I know we're talking a lot about how awesome it feels to play with four players on the same couch, but we support. Uh, four players in any combination. So awesome. the three of us can be playing on the same couch and we have a, you know, our, you know, our friend in Irvine, we can ask him to join <laughs> in online. And you know, when you're joining, when you're joining a game online, you're not tethered to the same screen. You can go anywhere you want and stuff like that. But really important that we really support you know, whatever combination of players, local and offline. Another thing uh, I want to point out here too is, you know, I mean, PS3 is in its seventh year. And you would not guess that by looking at Diablo 3. I mean, this game is very true to the PC version, which I played when it first came out. It looks great. It runs smoothly. I mean, the, enemy, the screen is packed with enemies, tons of textures and lighting effects and particles going on. I mean, how long have you guys been working? Obviously, it takes some work to, to cram a massive PC game into PS3, but it doesn't look any worse for the wear. I mean, what was the process for that like? Well, we had people working on it from a technical standpoint uh, early on, even while we were working on PC. Uh, so we, they laid the groundwork with the engine, making sure that everything we did in the PC was available to us on console so that we could make the game work around the controller and around the couch. So we had everything we needed. Um, and then, of course, since PC is launched, we've benefited from everything they've done. We have a lot of their updates. We have all their tuning. So we know a lot because we have a lot of people, millions of people have been playing Diablo for months. And so we have, actually it's over a year now. And so we have all of that and we were able to integrate all of that learning and all of that technical time spent into one game that's built around the console. And Blizzard's legendary for supporting their games after they come out. I mean, I just, 
Again, as a, as, a, as a former Diablo 2 addict, I mean, you guys are putting updates in the game six, seven, eight, nine years after. So I, have every, I think we have every indication here this game's going to be very well supported on console. But now we're seeing the PS3 version. And I believe you guys have announced a launch date for that coming out uh, a little September, later this fall. September 3rd. September 3rd. All right. Perfect timing. That's a great, great time. But also, this game's coming to PS4. It is, right. I know we're focused on the PS3 version because that's coming out. And of course, the PS4 version is going to be at a later time. But can you give us a little bit of a preview of how you're how you're looking at that PS4 version and, and some of the perks that might be there as well? So I think our um, I think our philosophy uh, will be exactly the, the the same. In other words, you know, we when we were working on the PC game, we said, what? How can we make this an awesome PC game? And then we were talking about you know bringing that experience to the PlayStation 3. So it's like, how can we make this an awesome PS3 experience? So now that we're sort of ramping down on on the, on the PlayStation 3 version. We're asking ourselves the same questions: Is how can we take you know, that awesome PS4 and that controller? You know, it just it has so many great opportunities, like you know, the trackpad, the share button. Like, yeah. you know, so Jason's gonna be you know, one of the key guys on that on that project, and it's just gonna be you know great to go through that process again and ask ourselves how could we make it feel like it was hand built for this controller. Sweet. Have you, now we got DualShock 4s are out on the floor. PS4s are out on the floor here at E3. It's a crazy show for everybody, but have you gotten your, a chance to wrap your hands around the, the sort of DualShock 4s that they have out there on the floor? Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we, we totally have. It's, uh, what do you think? I mean, what's your first impression here? I mean, Well, the, it's one of those things that DualShock is such a classic controller, it is. right? And in some ways, it's, it's really defined console gaming, you know, you know, not just for this generation, but I think, you know, for, you know, for, for 15 years. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, to sort of update that classic in such a smart way, you know, the the, the shape of the analog sticks yeah. feels, feels good. Uh -huh. the, the weight of it feels good. The triggers, you know, they're, they're, they're finally like responsive and your finger's not gonna be slipping from it. So it's, it's great that, you know, Sony has this confidence that they said we have, we have, we have something great with a, with a DualShock and we're just gonna try to find a way to make it better. My Absolutely, favorite, yeah, it's not, it's not heavy-handed. It's all the right tweaks. I mean, you know, we're pretty particular. We spend a lot of time playing on consoles. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, for, the, for Sony to move it in the direction where the sticks feel just right and everything's tuned just right, uh, they, I think they made all the right decisions. My favorite detail, I'm, I'm going to go out and say it now, is there's this subtle sort of tactile feel, to like a kind of a texture that's on the yeah, handle. That's a great and point. It's, it's very hard to describe, but when you wrap your hands around it, you just go, yes. Totally, yeah. This is right. Yep. Uh, so I think we're almost out of time here, but I did want to ask you, were you guys in the PlayStation press conference the other night? We were. What was your favorite moment? Well, the whole thing. <laughs> no, I, it's, it's uh, you know, it's really exciting to be um, you know, part of this E3, you know, and I think, uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, Sony has done really well is, it, you know, it's, it's something that at Blizzard we find really important as well is listen to the gamers. Mm -hmm. You know, at Blizzard we have this thing where gameplay first and, you know, we understand that we're making these games, we're making these, these epic experiences for the gamers, right? And to see, you know, Sony sort of really, you know, come out and say like, we're making a gaming console. It does all this awesome stuff too, but it's a gaming console. Yeah. I'm like, yes. Yeah, and speaking of which, you actually have uh, some exclusive content you're providing for the PlayStation versions of the game, too. Can you just give us a quick kind of high-level glimpse of what Yeah, that's totally, and uh, Jason's w one of the guys who sort of came up with a lot of these ideas, so let him... Yeah, how'd you choose, I mean? Well, it, it was tough because we had a lot to pick from, but uh, so we did, of course, uh, we, we had to pick a couple of our favorites. So we went Drake's Amulet, which is one of the, one of the um, amulets you can get in the game early on uh, that's an ode to the Drake's Fortune series. And then um, we also have one from one of my very favorite games of all time, Journey. We have these cool journey shoulders that you can get. And not only does it look like the scarf you have in Journey, but even the little ticker tapes that come off the back when you're flying around in Journey, but we have those in there. So it's like, you know, we just really lovingly crafted that. And then we have one for ourselves. We have our uh, Leorix, uh, Leorix Skeleton Summoning Ring, you know, um, which is uh, the Skeleton King's uh, ring because that allows him to summon and control skeletons. So now you get to do it too. All right. And, uh these are, these are really powerful items, too. I mean, obviously, in a game like Diablo 3, you're getting new loot, you're getting this, you're getting that, you're throwing out old stuff, you're selling it. But these are ones you're, you're going to want to hang on to. Yep. The, the perks are unique. Yep. Really, I think the perks are unique, but also we also thought that you know, that's a really good point. So you're always picking up items. that We wanted to make sure that players had an emotional connection to these items, which is why we picked you know, the scar from, from Journey, you know, the, the, the amulet from, from, from Uncharted. It's like, you know, again, being an Uncharted and Journey fan, like I'll be wearing those items just because you know, I love those games and the guys at Naughty Dog and the game company are, are, are heroes to me. So I'm happy to be able to, to wear some of their stuff in, in our game. Well, guys, thanks for joining us. It's been one hell of an E3. Coming up next, we're going to have a look at the new Tales from Zillia trailer. Stay tuned.
When man and spirit coexist, dreams and wishes are fulfilled. The spirits have the power to bring man's wishes to fruition, and in turn, those wishes preserve and protect the spirit's livelihood. She claims she's Maxwell. She's supposed to be the spirit Maxwell? You gotta be kidding me. What in the world would a spirit like that be trying to destroy? When someone uses a Spyrex, spirits die. I know he must be stopped. I know I must help stop him. When a man loses his way in life, the ground beneath him starts to slowly crumble until there is nothing left. I can no longer obey the king. He uses his own people as pawns. What are we waiting for? We have to save those citizens. <laughs> Your metal is inspiring. All right then, hold on tight. No one in this world is more worthy to sit upon this throne than I. The spirits protecting humans. Now that is quite an interesting tale. Humans strive to become stronger. They constantly struggle to grow more for the sake of others. They rise to the occasion. Thank you.